Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Tuning, and Marine. In this video, I'm showing a 4.3 Mercury Merc Cruiser engine that I've just recently built and installed back in the customer's boat. And um, what I'm about to show you, I consider probably one of my most uh, important videos that I've ever done on a marine application. So this engine has what's called a Thunderbolt ignition, which is that module right there on the side of the exhaust. And um, that's a Mercury specific module that runs the ignition system. And it's got a Mercury specific distributor back there. So uh, this engine is a 1990s, early 2000s Circa engine. And uh, that was the technology at the time. So one of the things that cropped up with this rebuild was uh, I felt like the ignition was, it had a weak ignition because it took me a while to get it started. Um, had a lot of difficulty getting this engine to start up and I felt it was cause a weak spark. So when I looked into replacing this ignition module, the uh, ignition module there, it turns out you cannot buy them anymore. They don't sell new. That's a Thunderbolt 5 ignition module. They make a Thunderbolt 4 also, but that's a Thunderbolt 5. So um, I wanted to upgrade his ignition, but I couldn't. And uh, they sell used ones on eBay for four or $500, which is ridiculous because you don't know if it's gonna work or not when you get it. But if you have a Mercury uh, engine with a Thunderbolt ignition, the Thunderbolt ignition is a Mercury specific ignition and it goes with a Mercury specific distributor. So if you have that kind of ignition system, you're uh, basically uh, on borrowed time. The, uh, if, you ever, if you ever lose that ignition module, you will not be able to find a replacement. So I advised the customer what I found out and uh, told him that the solution to this is what's called a uh, Delco EST distributor upgrade. There's a conversion kit and uh, at the end of this video, I'll show you a, a screenshot of the kit that you can buy. Um, actually, I think it's Sierra 18-5513 off the top of my head. So I've got one of those in order. It'll be here tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to actually put it in and I'll show you how I'm doing that. But um, for the time being, I just wanted to show you, uh, introduce you to what's going on. So that's a Thunderbolt 5 ignition module and we'll be taking it out along with a distributor. And uh, we'll be replacing those two items. Um, having said all that, if you're not experienced with wiring, you probably shouldn't do this on your own. Uh, I'm going to do a very good video to show you how to do it, but um, it, it's a little bit tricky. So the first thing to note is if you take this module out, this Thunderbolt 5 module out, you need to make sure that you understand the purpose of every single wire that's connected to it on these two terminals right here, these two uh, plugs right there, before you start. So don't start this project unless you have determined what those wires are. Um, and also, um, also you don't start, don't ever start cutting wires until you physically located the new components, distributor, whatever you got to mount, coil, whatever. Make sure you've got everything mounted before you start cutting wires, so you know how far to, how back, how far back to cut your wires. All right. So having said that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and explain what the purpose of these wires are on the Thunderbolt Five ignition module. So first of all, I'm gonna take the top one loose and show you what's going on. So this is a six pole connector. It's got six slots for six wires. Not all of them are used. So right off the bat, I can tell you right now that one of those, the one of those is holes is plugged up. That's fine. So what you have is the, these, the white with the red stripe and the white with the green stripe, those are going to your distributor. And then right back here, that's what's plugged. It's plugged into those two plugs right there. And that's coming direct, that's coming from the, uh, the sensor inside the distributor. That's going to go away. So these two wires will be going away. Now, there's another wire. The uh, the gray wire is your tack signal. That's that's the wire that's actually, actually on this, this system, this gray wire is what's running your coil. So this module is what fires the coil through that gray wire right there. The gray wire is considered your tack wire because it also runs from the ignition coil all the way up to the front to the, uh, to the uh, boat harness connector on pin two. And that's what runs your tachometer up in your console, in your dash. All right, then you have a black wire, that's just a ground, going back to uh, in harness ground in there. Then you have the yellow wire, and I'll explain that in a minute. Then on the other side, you have a purple and white wire. That purple and white ends up over here, it, right here, and it's, your, it's, it's over by what your uh, shift kill switch, which I don't have hooked up right now, and uh, I don't have the... Out, I don't have the outdrive on this boat right now anyway, but um, the purple wire ends up right here. This is what you use to, if you're setting the timing with the Thunderbolt, you ground this wire, you put a jumper and you ground this wire to make the Thunderbolt go into base timing mode so you can set the timing with the timing light. 
I'm keeping that wire and I'm gonna repurpose it, which I'll explain later when I actually install the ignition. So we're keeping that, but it's being repurposed. All right, so now back to the yellow wire. The yellow wire is part of your alarm circuit. The yellow wire goes to the temperature overheat alarm. So if you have a, if your engine overheats, you'll have a horn that'll go off and that yellow wire is what does it. Now you might ask, why is it going to the ignition module? Well, I had to do a lot of research to find that out myself. So what that yellow wire does is, um, actually it, it comes on, let me talk about the other wire first. So this wire, this connector here, so here's your other connector and it's a two pole, it's got, it's a four pole connector, but it's only using two of the wires, two, two of the poles, two of them are plugged and the other two are used. So if you see there, there's a tan wire, well actually I guess it's a, they call it a blue wire or a tan stripe, I'm not sure what it, I think it's more of a tan wire with a blue stripe. I think it is tan with blue. So. That tan with blue is actually coming from the horn itself. If you ground that tan blue at any time, it'll, it'll turn the horn on. So what they've done, what Merck Cruiser's done, is they, they bring that wire to the module, and then they pass, it's a pass-through device. It passes that blue, that uh, tan with the blue onto the yellow internally, and it would sound the horn just like if it wasn't there. However, what the module does is uses the, uh, when that, over temperature alarm goes in, it makes the it makes the module deactivate a timing function. It, it advances the timing internally, and the purpose of that yellow wire and, uh, is to tell it when the engine's overheating, so it disables that timing advance system. But what that means is you can take the tan wire with the blue stripe, cut it here, cut the yellow here, and splice them together, and your horn functionality will, be, will remain. It just, it doesn't tie into the ignition mod. The new Delco distributor doesn't use that. So that's how I'm gonna resolve that. So this tan, tan wire with a blue stripe will be tied to the yellow. I'll uh, just butt splice them together or bullet connect them together. And that'll take care of that. The purple wire is actually your, 12, your plus 12 volts source of power to your, to your module. I'll be repurposing the, uh, let's see. Um, actually, I won't be using this purple wire. I'll be, it'll be, It'll still be used, but it won't be connected to anything. When I say still be used, it'll still be here, but I won't be connecting anything. I'll just leave it in the connector to keep it from touching that. I'll probably fill this whole connector up with some silicone and keep, keep water out of it. So then, um, so now we've talked about every wire except for the, uh, let me flip it back over here. We've talked about every wire except that looks like a white wire with a black stripe. It's hard to tell what that is. So that white wire right there with the black stripe is your shift kill wire. And it comes out over here at your kill shift kill switch right here. So the way that works is that this switch right here, which you can see right down there, there's your, that's your shift kill switch right there. It's tied into this, this wire here. And then when the switch makes, this is a black wire that goes to ground. So it just ground, it grounds out this module to kill the ignition so that you can, uh, it takes the load off the, uh, gear box in the lower unit so that you can shift gears so you can shift out of forward or reverse without a load on the engine without the engine loading up the gears um, I'm going to repurpose this wire and this wire and um, to show you how to wire in the kit you have to wire in your kit your shift kill switch differently with the Delco system than you do with the um, Mercury system and I'll explain that later when I actually do the wiring so that's a preliminary uh, rundown of the wires in the mercury system that I'm going to be changing and uh, like I said I'll be taking this distributor out replacing the distributor ignition coil is right there I'll be replacing that and uh, this the only thing I think this blue coil wire from from there to the coil I mean to the distributor cap has got to be replaced because they have different type uh, different type terminals on them but um, anyway you'll see all that when I actually get the kit it'll be arriving tomorrow and I'll uh, show you how to install that system when it arrives.